What it do, T Squad? It's your girl Keisha, aka Color Me Pink, and I'm here with this week's All T All Shade Love and Marriage Detroit Season 1 Episode 2 Review. Let's get right into the foolishness, child. So the episode starts off with Brandon blaming Kobe for Christina being upset that he didn't tell her that he started working with a new artist. Somehow he made it Kobe's fault though. Somehow in the matrix, it was Kobe's fault. Kobe, by the way, reminds me so much of the BAM. The way she talks, all up in here, they kind of look alike. Are y'all relatives? Like, cause what's going on here? But anywho, um, Brandon says that in his confessional when he cheated, he thought that he didn't want to be married anymore. He thought that he was done. He couldn't stand her. She got on his nerves. But obviously they were able to work it out some type of way that they are where they are now. She asked, was he with the artist when she called and he was acting funny? And he says, yes. But getting still in his confessional, he says that he don't feel like he was wrong. Like, if this show does nothing else, it makes me thank God and tap dance on the devil's tears that I am single. Because if this is what y'all out here dealing with, then Lord, my life is great. <laughs> like, fantastic that I don't have to deal with this type of foolishness because... It's just the inconsiderateness, the disrespect, the lying, the secrecy of it all. And you doing all of this stuff behind her back and then want to wonder why she behaves and thinks the way that she does. Like, make it make sense, sir. Like, what's going on up here? Nothing? Oh, God. So Russell tells Kobe to stay out of folks' business as they're um, doing some DIY stuff in their house. Um, she still feels like Brandon should have told his wife, which I 100% agree. But at the same time, I do understand where Russell's coming from because you talking about he should have told his wife <coughs> about what he was out here doing. When you over there in the, in the dark yourself, not knowing what your husband doing. <laughs> because he reveals to her that he wants to become an ordained minister and that he started school two weeks prior behind her back. Knowing that she's a PK kid and it was very hard for her growing up that way. She did not like it at all. And he over here doing stuff behind his woman's back. Like, can't none of these Negroes on this show be trusted. And he was the fine one. I expected more out of him. But then, you know, he's made out of devil's, uh, devil cake. What's that? Devil's food cake? <laughs> That's what he made out of. Because that is a fine man right there. That is a fine looking chocolate Clark Kent if I've ever seen one. Like, he needs to be in a Marvel superhero movie. All right? But she, of course, is very upset by this because, A, why did you do this behind my back? And who said that I wanted to be a preacher's wife? Like, that is a huge decision that you have to make as a couple. Like, that's just not something you can run off and do on your own. Yes, he has a calling, but that still is something that you need to talk about with your wife. You just don't go to, you know, is it seminary school? Is that what it's called? Whatever it's called. And don't discuss that with your spouse. Like, what are y'all thinking? Like, I'm just so blown away. Um, then he lay, uh, lays on her that he's thinking about opening up a gym. That he is telling her about this before he makes any moves. And I'm thinking it's because it has something to do with their finances and he needs her blessing or her financial assistance. She was very upset, but once he got to kissing on her and stuff, it was just like, uh -huh. You get on my nerve. I hope that a, a longer, more extensive conversation was had once the cameras go off because ain't no way. This show making me tired and I ain't even in now one of these relationships and I'm just disgusted. So Christina and Brandon put together some furniture for their new penthouse apartment that they have. 
Christina doesn't think that Kobe was trying to be malicious when she was bringing up the fact that he was working with a different artist. I don't think that she was being malicious at first. But I do think that once she found out that he hadn't told uh, Christina, I think that she started to, you know, stir the pot. We on a reality show. Let me dig further. I do believe that very much. So he goes on to call Kobe a mean girl and says that she swagger jacks Christina's idea because Christina came up with some type of event. And then like a day or two later, a week later, Kobe turned around and said that she was doing the same event. Now, uh, Christina says that, you know, Kobe looks at her like a big sister. She looks up to her. So, you know, she set trends and basically she follows. <laughs> now, Brandon did admit that he's saying all this about Kobe because she blasted him, which is such a female thing to do. Like if, if, if this is a genuine concern of yours, then why hadn't you been said anything about it? Now you want to say something about it because she put you on blast because you effed up and didn't do what you were supposed to do as a husband. Like outside of Russell so far, Brandon and Anthony got some real zesty ways of behaving that it just is a whole turn off, a whole turn off. And then his man bun is pissing me off like, ugh. Um, I told y'all when I did my, uh, cast breakdown video before this show even aired that it was going to be a problem between Kobe and Christina because they're both influencers. I knew that that was going to end up being an issue between those two ladies. Um, so the guys end up going out with their homie Bravo, who I guess is going to be like a friend to the show. They out at this club and Russell apologizes to Brandon on Kobe's behalf. Uh, Christina, however, does not know that Brandon is at the club and ends up calling while they kicking it. And she was like, you must be somewhere watching some, y'all must be watching some booty shaking. He was like, what, what you talking about? We at a Bible study meeting. Or he said they was at church or something. And she believed it. Like, I'm like, this gotta be scripted, this part right here. Cause like, no way did she believe that these men are out at like Bible study or something together. Like, make it make sense, please. So, Bravo was like, how y'all going to do a showcase when you can't even leave the house? <laughs> because Anthony and Brandon have decided to put together a showcase to show, you know, Brandon's artists. I don't know why Anthony's a part of it. I guess because he works in the entertainment field. I don't really know. I can't stand Anthony with all of my fibers of every bit of my being. I cannot stand this man. So Brandon reveals that the reason why he cheated in the past is because he got really close with one of his artists, you know, building her sound and her music. And she was talking about her relationship issues. He got comfortable and started talking about his. And basically one day Christina was going through his messages and saw that he was talking crazy about her to this girl saying he can't stand her. She get on my nerves. It's that in the third. And of course, like anybody would be, she was extremely distraught and hurt by this. Like any wife would be like, how dare you talk bad about me to some broad. And then the broad that you got me styling and working with. Like, that's a huge betrayal, a huge betrayal. And then he wonder why she's as insecure as she is, because you made her that way. But then at the same token, Christina, he did what he did, but you got to get you together because you policing him and tracking him and being so insecure is going to further put a wedge between y'all. And if you know in your heart of hearts that you're not going to be able to get past this, then you need to let it go, honey, because you're doing way too much. You need to be on uh, NCIS <laughs> or Law and Order SVU with the way you out here acting, girl. Like, because ain't no way I'm got to be running in behind no man checking up on him every five seconds. Because at the end of the day, no matter how much checking up you doing, if a man going to cheat, he going to find a way to cheat. You could be calling him all day long and he could be sitting right next to the, the chick that he cheating on you with and she just sitting there being quiet. Like, so all of that is for nothing, love. And you look crazy. You are far too pretty to be running in behind this fool. He ain't even all that. 
at all. Like, you the prize? Like, you are a beautiful girl. Like, make it make sense. I'm not understanding. Like, ugh. And then with Brandon, if you know that she, you, she don't trust you and that, of course, it annoys you and it gets on your nerves and it kind of, like, strips away at this man's manhood, then you're going to have to figure it out, bruh. Like, you really going to have to figure this thing out, like, because y'all getting on my nerves. Like, really, truly getting on my everlasting nerves with this. And y'all, we ain't nothing but on episode two. And I'm already just over it. So, Latoya ends up holding a wine tasting for her opulence wine. And who is that? Aunt Brandon and uh, Christina is there along with one of Christina's partners. And Bravo is there. And Anthony brings up Brandon being a wild boy in his past and that they discussed it at the club. Now, mind you, Brandon told them to keep this here. Do not bring this up around my wife that I told y'all what happened with me and this girl. But Anthony is a little woman, so of course he decided to bring it up. And I don't think that it was a mishap. I think he did it on purpose to stir the pot because he's a little prissy girl <laughs> that likes to be in drama and mess so christina like y'all was at the club like what so you lied to me again like what is going on like you just keep on lying to me so she makes it clear that she said that she did not want him at no club or whatever so anthony was like every time you turn right or left you gotta let her know bro and so Christina and her confession was like, I'm not understanding why this man always got something to say about me and my husband and our marriage. Like, why is he all up in our mix and don't even know the, the flavor of this Kool-Aid? Like, what is going on, Miss Girl? Like, what is happening here? So her partner ended up asking him, why is he so passionate about their marriage? And baby, little mama went inside her bra and said, uh-uh. So Anthony was like, I don't know you. You need to stay in your lane. You must not know who I am. So you're like still like a look girl. So you need to stay over there in your lane because you don't want to come over here with me. You don't know me. So don't play with me. And it's like, have you been watching the Logo Network? <laughs> Have you watched Mean Girls? Do you have it on repeat? It's like, that's your go-to-sleep movie? Like, what is going on with you? And then I'm looking at Latoya, who just sitting there with her head down, looking so embarrassed. And I'm like, you ought to be. You ought to be very embarrassed that you even married this thing. Like, you look a fool. You look worse than Christina, mind you. You look worse within Christina because you basically married your gay best friend. <laughs> Cause this man is zestfully clean. Like, I don't know if he got bullied a lot as a child. It's obvious that like he was that dude growing up that nobody paid attention to. He probably was chubby. He wasn't that attractive. And like as a defense mechanism, he, you know, develop the mouth on him. Like, everything about him just screams insecure. Insecure. Like, he needs to be thinking his lucky stores. He even landed a woman like you. But then I'm looking at you crazy that you even marry him. Like, what about him is attractive to you? Like, y'all might as well be wearing the same underwear. Like, what is happening here? Give him the tampon out of your coochie because obviously, like old girl said, it was his time of the month. Like, I don't know what is the casting process over there at Kingdom Reign, but picking all of these ain't shit, and I'm just going to say ain't shit, narcissistic, egotistical, caveman, disrespectful men it's just not that deal. I understand that you want drama for a reality show, but I'm tired of seeing these disrespectful dudes. I really, truly am. I would have appreciated if we could have at least got one man that literally respected his wife and was loving and caring 
and not lying and keeping secrets and not, you know, behaving like a married man. Like, what is going on? Like, to be honest with you, I'm very turned off by this show, really honestly and truly, because it's the same recipe from Love and Marriage Huntsville. And I'll say uh, DC is a better cast because, you know, yeah, Jamie can be disrespectful to Irena or whatever the case may be. Um, but for the most part, at least we know there is love and respect there, you know, deep down. But these Negroes on this show, like, absolutely not. Absolutely not. And then Brandon and Christina should have jumped on him and checked him right then and there. Because don't be talking to my homegirl like that. Like, who are you talking to, sis? So the friend was like, you know, it's clear you're in your feelings. You must be on your cycle. And Anthony talks, like, girl, please. You might as well just be like, girl, bye. <laughs> He talk about some, uh, girl, please, you need to watch who you keep around, Christina, instead of keeping these little birds around. Look, girl, don't play with me. Like, who says that as a grown man? Look, girl, don't play with me. Like, were you the only boy <laughs> in your family? Like, did you grow up in a house full of sisters? Like, Ain't nothing about this dude manly or attractive or sexy. Like, everything about him is just, like, I want to throw up. Like, he is a horrible casting decision. And LaToya, if you don't leave this nigga alone ASAP, because he is an embarrassment. Like, literally an embarrassment to men in general. Like, I don't understand how any part of you get moist to allow him to lay on top of you, breathe next to you. And then the fact that you procreated with this Negro gagged me with a spoon because I'm just like, what is, were you drunk? Did somebody like make you marry him? Like, do y'all got like an understanding? Like that you gonna be his beard or something? Because I'm really not understanding what you see in this dude. Cause he is literally a little woman, <laughs> like, and he ugly, let's just keep it above, there's nothing attractive about this nigga, he literally looks like Grimace, he literally does, like, everything about him is unattractive, and if any part of him remotely could have been attractive, as soon as he gets to open his mouth, it literally goes downhill, like, just live in your truth, sir. <laughs> live in your truth and become the woman that you always wanted to be, girl, because I don't even know what to say about you because, oh, you more feminine than me. Good God almighty. Overall, I'm going to give the episode, to be honest with y'all, I'm going to give this episode an F. And y'all don't never see me give nothing an F. And I'm giving it an F, y'all, because I'm sick of it. I'm sick of this same recipe. It gave me food poisoning. I need for Carlos and them to restart the pot, start over again, because I am have lost my patience with seeing black men like this on television. It's bad enough we had to deal with Marceau and Martel and Maurice for the last six seasons. Now you got all three of these buffoons and these coons, like... If this is love and marriage, baby, I don't want it. Don't want it. Don't need it. Uh-uh. I will stay over here single forever. Because if this is the pool of men out here, baby, I will continue to live in the lap of luxury by myself. You heard? Y'all let me know what y'all think about this foolishness down below in the comment section, you guys. Make sure to thumbs up this video, like, and subscribe, and hit that notification bell button. Whew, Lord Jesus, I love y'all, and I'll see y'all on the next video. Bye.